Let's have a look at how to solve quadratic equations by completing the square. If you're not sure how to complete the square, watch my videos on completing the square first, as that will make things easier. Remember, a quadratic equation looks like this. So you've got ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, where the a, b and c stand for numbers. And this is an equation, not an expression, as we've got the equals zero part. Let's have a look at some exam questions. So here we've got question one. The first part of the question, it asks us to complete the square for x squared plus 8x plus 3. So let's do this first. So we've got part A, and so we've got x squared plus 8x plus 3. So I'm going to do this quite quickly because we've gone over how to do this in a previous video, but do check that out if you're still not too sure on how to do this. So we're going to have this equals, so we do a bracket, we put x in, close the bracket squared, here we put half of the term in front of the x, so here we've got plus 8, so we're going to put plus 4, then we check on the thing at the end, which is the plus 3, then we minus whatever numbers here squared, so minus 4 squared, so simplifying this, we get x plus 4 squared plus 3 minus 16, 4 squared, so that equals x plus 4 squared plus 3 minus 16 is going to be minus 13, so that's our answer for part A. And now we've got this new part here where we want to solve a quadratic equation. So that's a quadratic expression because there's no equal sign. Now it's an equation because we've got an equals to zero. So first just think what this question means. When it says solve x squared plus 8x plus 3 equals zero, it means it wants us to find the x values that make this true. So remember x stands for a number. So we want to find the numbers that x can take such that if you do that number squared plus 8 times that number plus 3, we get 0 as our answer. So what do we do for this? Well, so part B, so we want to solve x squared plus 8x plus 3 equals 0. We can rewrite this using what we've just done. So this is x plus 4 squared minus 13 equals 0. Now we can rearrange this. So it makes sense to me, we've got minus 13 here, but we could add 13 to both sides. So we get x plus 4 all squared equals 13. So that's by adding 13 to both sides. Now we've got a squared sign here, and we want to get rid of the squared sign because that's kind of getting in the way. So to reverse squaring, we want to take the square root. If we square root both sides, we're going to get that this is x plus 4, because we're square rooting a square, so that cancels each other out. We want to square root this side for the square root of 13, but you have to be careful because both the positive square root of 13 squared is 13, but also the negative square root of 13 squared is 13, because when you times a minus by a minus, it cancels out. So it's just a thing to remember, every time you square root a side, in this sort of situation, you want the plus or minus the square root of 13. So we're saying here, it could be either plus the square root of 13 or minus the square root of 13. Both make sense because if you go back up a layer and you square this side and square this side, you get the same thing. Let's draw here, we are taking the square root. And now, so remember we're trying to solve for x. So we've almost got x on its own here. If we minus four from both sides, we get x equals minus 4 plus or minus the square root of 13. So that's by minusing 4 from both sides. There's a square root here. So in fact, if we're asked to give an exact answer, this is fine for our answer. We're saying that the solutions of this equation are where x equals minus 4 plus or minus the square root of 13. So in fact, we have, we've got two solutions here. So we're saying the answer to this is x equals minus 4 plus root 13, or x equals minus 4 minus the square root of 13. So to give the complete answer to this, you either write it like this with the plus or minus here, or you write down both possible answers. So it's only correct if you put the two answers. If you're asked to give your answer to a certain number of decimal places, you can put this into your calculator. So this first solution, minus 4 plus the square root of 13, if we put this in our calculator here, the square root of 13, we get that it equals minus 0 0.39444. So if we want it to say um, 
three significant figures, we can say, um, so for three significant figures, the answer is, so x equals, so minus 0 0.394, or x equals, and we can put the other one in, so minus 4 minus the square root of 13, that is minus 7.61 for three significant figures. So just check the um, exam question, whether it's asking for exact answers, in which case you can give it in third form, or if it's asking for like decimal places or significant figures, in which case you want to put it in your calculator and um, get the decimal places. And you can also check that your answers are correct, because remember, we've found x values that satisfy this equation. So if you do minus 4 plus the square root of 13, all squares, plus 8 times that, plus 3, you should get it equal to 0. So I'll quickly try that on the calculator. So you can see I've put it in here. And when I press equals, you do indeed get zero. And that will be true of the other one as well. So it's a good way to check if you've got time in an exam. OK, let's try another question. So now we have another one. It says express x squared minus 14x plus 5 in this form, hence solve this equation. So notice the question doesn't explicitly say complete the square, but it wants us to write it in this form, which looks like the result of completing the square. So this question really means complete the square. Let's do part A first. We want to complete the square of x squared minus 14x plus 5. This equals, we do the bracket, x, close bracket squared, half of the number in front of the x, so that's minus 7, chuck on the thing at the end, plus 5, and then minus this number squared, so minus 7 squared, that equals x minus 7 squared, plus 5 minus 49, which is x minus 7 all squared minus 44. And that's the answer to part A. So we put it in this form. And so you can see here, m is minus 7 and n is minus 44 if it asks for the m and n values. But it's written in that form. I'm going to write that answer down on a post-it note so we can rub that out and give us some more space. So now we've got part B. Hence solve 5 plus x squared equals 14x. This looks a little bit different to the expression up here, but not so different. So I think the first thing you want to do, if you see it in a bit of a funny format, is rearrange it. So it looks like our standard quadratic equation up here. So if we subtract 14x from both sides, we're going to get 5 plus x squared minus 14x equals 0. So that's subtracting minus 14x from both sides. We can rearrange the left hand side, um, this is the same as for x squared first, and then the minus 14x, and then the plus 5 equals 0. So that looks like the um, expression we had in part A, so that's a good sign. So using the similar trick we did for the first question, we're going to use our hard work for part A to help us. So we know that this, when you complete the square, is this. So if we write that in, this left hand side is the same as x minus 7 all squared minus 44 um, and we've got that equaling 0. We can then add 44 to both sides to make it look a bit neater. So we've got x minus 7 all squared equals 44, adding 44 on both sides. Then we can take the square root of both sides. So on the left hand side that just gives us x minus 7 on its own because we're cancelling out the square by square rooting. Here we've got the square root of 44 and don't forget the plus or minus that's really important so that's by square rooting both sides now we want to solve so remember we're solving to find the value of x for which this is true so we want to get x on its own on one of the sides so if we plus 7 to both sides on the left hand side we get x on its own which is what we want and then we get our plus 7 here plus or minus root 44 that's by plusing 7 on both sides so remember, every time you do something to one side, you do it to the other. And so this is our answer. And remember, as before, this means this really stands for two different answers. So we can write it like this, or we can say we have two solutions. We have x equals 7 plus square root of 44, or x equals 7 minus the square root of 44. And you give both of these answers together, or like this with the plus or minus together and again you can whack that in the calculator if you need it to certain decimal places and you can also check your solutions with a calculator if you put in 
choose one of the x solutions, say this one, and you do 5 plus this squared, um, write down what you get, and then if you do 14 times this, do you get the same answer? If you do, then it satisfies this equation, and so you're all good. Let's try a final exam question. Okay, so this looks a bit different. We've got solve for x, 2x squared plus 20x minus 16 equals 0. In the previous questions, they sort of guided us a bit through it. They told us to complete the square first, and then they told us to solve for x. Here, they haven't told us to complete the square first, but we know that if we follow this method we've done before, we will be able to get the answer. Because it hasn't told us which method to use, we could also do other things, like using the quadratic formula to find x. Basically, you just want to use a tool that you know that can help you find the x value. So that could be factorising, it could be using the quadratic formula, or it could be completing the square. But in this video, we're going to look at how to complete the square to solve this. We know that what we want to do is complete the square for this left hand side first. If you like, we're giving ourselves our own part A. We're going to tell ourselves to complete the square on the left hand side first. So 2x squared plus 20x minus 16. We want a 1 in front of the x squared to be able to complete the square using our method. So we want to take out the 2 in big brackets, so 2 times x squared plus 10x minus 8. I have a video on how to complete the square when a is not 1, so watch that if this is a bit fast and confusing for you. So taking out um, the 2 and then we complete the square inside, so we have 2 times we do bracket x e big x squared plus half of this, plus 5, check on the thing at the end, minus 8, then we minus this number, 5 squared. Remember these big brackets, so that's 2 lots of x plus 5 squared, minus 8, minus 25, 2 lots of x plus 5 squared, minus 8, minus 25 is minus 33, and this equals 2 lots of x plus 5 squared minus 66 if you multiply both terms by 2. So we've completed the square for this, and now we want to solve for x that this equals 0. So to give us a bit more space, I'm just going to write here that... Now we want to solve 2x squared plus 20x minus 16 equals 0. So using the tricks we've done before, we've completed the square already, so we've done the hard work, so we're going to write that in, 2 times x plus 5 all squared minus 66 equals 0. Now we can add 66 to both sides, so we get 2x plus 5 squared equals 66. Notice we've got a 2 times everything here, so it's a good idea now to divide everything by 2. So if we get x plus 5 all squared equals 33, if we divide both sides by 2. Now we want to get rid of the square root sign. So if we square root both sides, we get x plus 5 equals plus or minus the square root of 33. We want to get x on its own to solve for x. So if we minus 5 on both sides, we get x equals minus 5 plus or minus the square root of 33. And that is our answer. So that was minus 5, minus 5. And again, this answer stands for two things. So you can write it like this, or you can say x equals minus 5 plus square root of 33, or x equals minus 5 minus the square root of 33. And that will also get you four marks. Once again, you can chuck these in a calculator if you want decimal places, or you can also use the calculator to substitute this where x is here and make sure that it does equal 0. And then you know that you've got it correct. So there you go, that's how you solve quadratic equations by completing the square. Thanks for watching, here's another video I think you'll like, here's another video YouTube thinks you'll like. I have no idea what it is, maybe it's good, maybe it's not, who knows? If you like this video and want to see more aesthetic messy videos, do check out my channel and subscribe!